today we're welcoming Katie and HD and Katie is the president of the Mountaineer chapter of the National Audubon Society of West Virginia. So she's joining us from all the way across the country. We're so happy to have her. Um, she is an author of two books, um, two books for adults and also two children's books. And so she's going to share one of those with us today. And I am going to hand it over to her. So Jess and Reese and I are going to drop off and Katie's going to tell us her story. So welcome, Katie. Great. Thank you. Um, thank you very much for having me uh, and for having HD. Um, we're very uh, excited to be here. Um, HD, I'll tell you more about HD um, in a couple minutes after the story, um, but she is a female Eastern Screech Owl and HD uh, stands for Humpty Dumpty, um, uh, because she had a great fall. Uh, she fell out of her nest as a very young baby. Um, and unfortunately, she broke a bone in her wing. Um, and she broke her uh, femur, um, bone in her leg. And she had some bad head trauma. And she doesn't see well enough uh, to catch food. So she doesn't fly well enough, although she's looking at something right now although she doesn't see well enough or fly well enough to go back to the wild. Um, but we wish that HD um, could be released, but um, unfortunately she, uh, she's stuck with us. But she has um, a home here um, at the Avian Conservation Center of Appalachia um, in Morgantown, West Virginia, where she is um, safe and well-fed and everybody loves her. So um, you might see me um, handing her little pieces of food sometimes. Um, I don't think that, I don't know that she'll actually eat, but these are just little worms. There, there she goes. <laughs> and that's just a little, a uh, little snack to keep her, um, keep her engaged. She'll probably just sit here the whole time, but she also might um, fly and land on my head or my shoulder, which she occasionally does. Uh, but anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and read, um, like Morgan mentioned, um, I write books for adults. I have two books for adults, one about cerulean warblers and one about uh, vultures. And then I have two for kids. Um, one is called um, Look, See the Bird. And Look, See the Bird was the first sentence that my co-author, um, Bill Wilson, uh, ever said. <laughs> so uh, this book is about bird migration. And then I have another book that's called um, Look, See the Farm. And that's what I'm going to read today. And you know, spoiler alert is that it's also about birds, um, even though it's, it's called Look, See the Farm. And uh, Bill Wilson is my co-author, like I mentioned, and he is uh, the owner of Birds and Beans Coffee, which I talked about on my previous web webinar. And the illustrator is Leanne Carter, and uh, Bill lives in um, near Boston, Massachusetts, and Leanne is down in Charlotte, North Carolina. So it was really fun to work on these projects with them. And I don't know if HD has ever, uh, heard this story before. So I want to go ahead and read um, Look, See the Farm. It's about two sisters. Hopefully everybody can see the pictures. Avery and Kelsey are sisters. They live in a city, but their grandparents live on a farm. Poppy and Nanny's farm is special. It is an organic farm, a place where healthy food is grown without spraying poison to kill weeds and insects. Barley, corn, hay, and vegetables grow on the farm, and red chickens strut around the farmhouse. Beautiful brown, black, and white cows roam the pastures, and Nanny, Poppy, and their helpers milk the cows every day. The girls are proud of their grandparents' farm. When we stopped spraying, Nanny says, the frogs came back, and the butterflies came back, and the birds came back. Avery and Kelsey liked the birds best of all. Me too. It's spring and time to visit Nanny and Poppy. The car turns onto a long straight road and crests a hill. Suddenly Avery points and says, look, I can see the farm. Kelsey squirms in her car seat. There at the bottom of the gentle hill on both sides of the road is the farm. Pastures, barns, silos, a store, and their grandparents' house. Poppy and Nanny come out to greet them and they all decide to go for a walk along the pasture to the woods. Avery runs ahead and Kelsey follows behind. Look, Avery says, see the bird, Kelsey? She points at a large brown and white bird with a bright yellow chest perched on a nearby fence post. Um, the meadowlark, and this is an Eastern meadowlark, but you in California would have Western meadowlarks. 
the meadowlark throws back his head and sings a clear whistled song. At the corner of the pasture, they turn down the lane and into the woods. It is cool and dark beneath the trees. Overhead, they can hear another bird singing. The sisters look up but can't see the wood thrush. He sounds like wind chimes, says Avery. They stand in the woods listening until Nanny and Poppy catch up to them and they all turn back for dinner. The next time the girls visit the farm is in the summertime. The sun is hot in the clear blue sky and Nanny and Poppy have just finished milking the cows. All the cows line up along, line up at their long manger to eat and Avery and Kelsey do too. They love the cows, gentle eyes, floppy ears and big noses. Overhead, tiny birds called barn swallows, you might recognize them, swoop and dive as they catch mosquitoes in their beaks. Kelsey watches as one of the birds flies to a cup-shaped nest attached to a wooden beam above the cows. Look, she says to Avery, see? Three baby swallow heads peek out of the nest. Avery and Kelsey watch the swallows until they hear a whistle behind them. The girls turn just in time to see five northern bob white chicks scooting along after their mother. The quail family slips into the tall grass and disappears. And you'd have California quail out there. Um, Gamble's quail in some parts of the West. Avery tries to teach Kelsey to whistle like a Bob White, but Kelsey just laughs and laughs. Avery and Kelsey visit the farm again in autumn when it is time to carve pumpkins. The leaves have turned from green to red, yellow, and brown. They sit on Nanny and Poppy's porch with the round orange pumpkins they picked from the patch next to the house. Mom sits on a rocking chair with their new baby brother, Georgie, while Dad shows them how to carve. A small brown bird with a white stripe over his eyes hops onto the porch railing, bobbing his tail. See the Carolina wren, Dad asks. The girls smile as the bird hops after a spider. The sun sinks lower in, in the sky and three shadows pass over the yard. Avery and Kelsey both look up and see black vultures on their way to a tree at the edge of the pasture where they will spend the night. Vultures clean up dead animals, Mom says. They're important birds and they're beautiful too, says Avery. Mom smiles and rocks in the chair while the girls carve pumpkins into jack-o'-lanterns. It's one of my favorite birds. Winter has come and a soft snow falls over the farm. Avery, Kelsey, and Georgie are spending the night at Nanny and Poppy's. After dinner, Nanny fills up the bird feeder and the girls watch the birds fly in for seeds. One of the birds is bright red with an orange beak. Wow, says Kelsey, see the red bird, Nanny? Nanny smiles, he's a Northern Cardinal, she says. He lives here all year. Avery draws a picture of the Cardinal while Kelsey and Nanny watch the feeder. Soon it is time to go to sleep, and Avery, Kelsey, and baby Georgie are tucked into their beds. Nanny and Poppy turn off the light, but before they leave the room, Avery notices something perched in a tree just outside the window. Look, she whispers and points. Kelsey sees it and whispers, an owl. It's an eastern screech owl, Poppy says quietly. They like to eat the mice that live in the barns. Avery and Kelsey stare at the little owl until they fall asleep, dreaming of the birds they will see on the farm. And that's the end. But there are a few questions um, for kids, for curious kids here at the back, like what does organic mean? Um, and uh, according to the U.S. Department of Agriculture, organic crops must be grown without using most types of pesticides, which are poisons used to kill insects, um, and synthetic fertilizers. And then why are organic farms important? And by not using pesticides, organic farms keep our soil healthy and our water free from pollution. And the organic farm farmers, workers, and their children can stay healthy by not handling dangerous chemicals. And of course, wildlife, such as the birds mentioned in this book, also benefit from the cleaner, healthier, biodiverse environments um, found on organic farms. Uh, and where can we buy organic food? Um, most grocery stores sell organic products. Um, some stores may have a section dedicated to organic food and you can look for, for 
a black circle with green and white inside. That's the USDA organic label. And a lot of farmers markets um, carry organic food too. So um, I'm gonna put this book down here and I can be, I can add, answer some questions, um, but I can also tell you for a minute about this beautiful little owl, um, HD, the Eastern Screech Owl. Um, we mentioned that she uh, fell out of her nest and broke everything. Um, and she was a very small baby, too young to be out of the nest. So since we knew that she was not going to be able to be released back to the wild, um, we didn't worry about her uh, imprinting on humans. Um, and imprinting is when birds develop an idea of what they are, who their family is. Normally when a young owl or any young bird comes in, we try very hard to not um, look at or have too much contact with them because we want them to know that they're owls. But with HD, we didn't really worry about it because um, we knew that she wasn't gonna be able to go back to the wild. So we, uh, we weren't worried about, here we go, I have that little mouse buddy, or that's not a mouse, that was a worm. So we weren't too worried about uh, her getting to like us too much. So um, she's a very, very nice little owl. Um, in the wild, screech owls, you have western screech owls, which are very similar to eastern screech owls. There also are um, whiskers screech owls, I think Mexican screech owls. Uh, and there are a lot of small, they're all small owls that are um, closely related. So screech owls would eat mice. Um, anything the size of a mouse or smaller could be prey for a screech owl. They also would eat a lot of insects like the mealworms is what she's eating here. And then wild, they might eat um, moths, uh, other large flying in insects that would fly at night. Uh, they might also eat things you'd find in a swamp like um, crayfish or, or small frogs, um, things like that. Do you want this little worm? Um, they might eat small birds roosting. They've even documented screech owls catching bats. Uh, but it's, it's got to be smaller than that size. Anything bigger than that is uh, too big for a screech owl to carry. And I don't know if you can see, but HD has got um, sharp talons. And owls have four toes, um, like, uh, like all the other birds, um, most of the other birds. There's two in the front and, and usually two in the back um, on owls whereas a hawk would have three in the front and one toe in the back. And an owl has a toe that can kind of move to front or back that allows them to kind of hold on to their prey very tightly. Uh, you might also notice that um, her eyes are on the front of her face, just like our eyes are. So if she wants to look and see what's going on, she has to turn her whole head like this. Um, and we will get owls hit by cars fairly often. Um, and it's in part because they don't see very well out of the sides. Their heads are on the front, they look at what they're gonna catch and they swoop down to catch it. And they don't look both ways uh, when they try to cross the street. Sometimes they get bumped by cars and they get those very big eyes um, get injured often. You can see HD's got just huge eyes. Um, she also, you, you probably can't really um, see it very well because it's, well, maybe you can see, this is her little beak right here. <laughs> Uh, it's the beak is small, but but they can open their mouths very very wide, um, and they can they can swallow big chunks of food if they want to. Um, they can even swallow if the mouse is small. They can even swallow the mouse whole. Uh, you might have noticed too that she looks just like. Do you want more? Do you want another? You want another little piece of food? Uh, you might notice that she looks just like tree bark. If this if she was sitting in a tree, you'd have a really difficult time seeing this little owl. I've only seen screech owls in the wild um, a few times, um, and they, they just blend in so, so well. I've heard them at night more often than I've seen them. Um, these little ear tufts right here, these little feathers, we call them ear tufts, but they're not actually, they don't have anything to do with hearing, and they're not ears. Her ears are actually over on the side of her head, um, sort of kind of where our ears are next to her eyes. And these are probably for uh, camouflage. They look like little leaves or twigs and they break up that big round um, owl face. Uh, screech owls are uh, 
This is probably the most common color of eastern screech owl that we see in West Virginia, but we also see them in a red um, or rusty color called, it's, uh, we call this gray morph, and the uh, rusty one we usually call red morph. There's also kind of a brown in between, uh, and they all look a lot like tree bark, and it's very amazing. Screech owls nest in hollow trees, so if you have a dead tree in your yard, uh, you can, you might want to leave it if it's not dangerous to anything, any structures, because owls love to nest in um, hollow trees, in holes in trees, and so do a lot of other bird species. Um, let's see if HD wants to eat. Well, let's see. I'm going to find her another little worm snack in here. Um, you can also encourage screech owls to uh, nest in a birdhouse. So if you if you have them, they're they're pretty big. Usually they're about they're about this big, and the hole has to be big enough for a screech owl to get inside. But you can encourage screech owls to nest right in your yard. Um, they don't need to be in the deep woods. You can have um, screech owls can be found in um, backyard habitats as long as there are a few trees. So um, that's sort of the crash course on screech owls. Um, if anybody had um, had any questions about them, I'm more than happy to more than happy to answer. Hey, Katie! Thanks so much. That was super fun, and it was fun to learn about screech owls. I mean, I've never seen one out here in Point Reyes, but I do know that we have uh, them. Uh, we have burrowing owls and great horn and barn owls and. Um, the Solway owl that I always want to see. It's super tiny, um, but I've never seen that one either. But this is really cool to get to see a screech owl up close. Um, and we will go into some questions. I just want to let you folks know that normally during the bird festival on the Saturday of the bird festival, we have a free kids program um, that's about four hours starting off with some live rescued birds that you get to meet. and. Um, and do owl pilot dissection and all kinds of other games. So if you haven't joined us for the festival before, it's every April, the last weekend, and you can learn more at pointraisebirdingfestival.org. Um, and we'll also send out some information about that um, after these webinars are over. This will also be recorded so you guys can watch it again and again. Um, and then we do have some questions here, and I think we're gonna kick it off with Reese, Morgan's daughter. Um, take, go ahead. Remember which question you wanted to ask her? Uh, where do you work? <laughs> so where do I work? Yeah. Um, well, the, the, that's kind of a tough question because I work a lot of places. Um, but the place where um, I spend the most time working is probably with the birds um, at the Avian Conservation Center of Appalachia, um, which is a mouthful. Um, we usually say ACCA. Um, it's a nonprofit uh, dedicated to conserving our region's wild birds through research, education, and rehab. Um, so that is where I, I do spend most of my time, and that's where HD lives. Um, I also work as um, a writer, uh, and I also work um, as a teacher, um, but I usually, I don't do teaching full time. I usually just teach a class or so every semester. So I do lots, I try to, I kind of do a couple different things. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, question, which I know the answer to because you told me, but um, how do you know that HD is a girl? How do you guys ah. So that's an excellent question. So she asked, how do we know that HD is a girl? So there's not a very obvious way to tell the difference between the boys and girls, male and female screech owls. The only uh, way to tell for sure is with a DNA blood test. Um, females are bigger than males, um, but, but it's, um, you can't really tell that by looking unless they're sitting right next to each other, which almost doesn't usually happen <laughs> very often. So to, make, to be sure that we know, if we really want to know one of our screech owls is a boy or a girl, um, we get a little, bit of, a little bit of blood and send it out to a laboratory that tells us. So we had HD um, tested to make sure she's a girl. Uh, we have another screech owl that's a male. His name is Randolph. And Randolph, we didn't do the DNA test on Randolph, but he is significantly smaller than HD. So we're fairly certain that he's a male. 
Um, nobody knows for sure why the females um, are larger. Uh, there are some different theories. Um, one theory is that, you know, the females, maybe they have to be a little heavier because they're, they're carrying eggs. They're flying around with eggs before they lay the eggs. Uh, or they might need to be heavier to defend a nest from a predator. And uh, Jessica mentioned great horned owls and screech owls can actually um, be, be prey for great horned owls. So great horned owls will actually eat screech owls. Uh, so, and then here in the east, uh, we have barred owls. And I think you might have some barred owls um, in the west. And they will also eat screech owls. Uh, but anyway, a large female maybe could defend a nest. Um, you know, maybe uh, they're catching prey of different sizes if the male and female are um, different sizes too. But whatever, whatever the reason is, it might also be a combination of several of those reasons, but the females are larger and um, we know for sure with HD because of the blood tests. Also, if, you, if one of them lays an egg, um, you know, only the girls lay eggs, the boys don't lay eggs. So if, if, it, if it lays an egg, you know you got a girl. <laughs> you. Jess, I'll let you do the, the Q&A box. Thank okay. you. Uh, those are good questions. So I, along that lines, uh, we have a question. How old is the screech owl? And is she attached to several people or just you? Well, so that's a good question. So HD um, was hatched in 2018. So she is about two years old right now. Um, and again, we've had her most of that time. Uh, we weren't sure she was going to survive because she was so young and badly injured when she came in. Um, so she is attached to everybody. Um, she's, she especially, I think she is, I mean, I'm a little, you know, biased. I think that she likes me the best, <laughs> but she is, she does like most people. I don't think she's met anybody she doesn't like yet. Um, and since she has been around humans, since she was so small, she is pretty accustomed to people. She gets a little bit nervous since she hasn't been doing this for, for you know, many years yet. Uh, she does get a little bit nervous around a large crowd of people. She would rather be with a, a few people. Um, you know, I get nervous around big crowds too, right? I mean, it's, a, uh, it's, it's probably pretty common. She also, since she doesn't see all that well, we think that might have something to do with it too. But, but she, she likes everybody. Um, but she, I definitely spent um, a lot of time with her when she was really small. It sounds like there's some interest about um, how you found the owl and maybe talk about like what the rescue, um, kind of what, we have a rescue place out here called the Sonoma Bird Rescue. That's who brings our live bird ambassadors. But maybe you could share a little bit about how HD was found and then what your organization does to help these birds. Uh, well, the story, and we don't always get the whole story, um, so we're on the same property as um, a veterinary hospital, um, Cheat Lake Animal Hospital, which is a 24-hour veterinary hospital, and we kind of um, built, uh, you know, built some enclosures and some space elsewhere on the property, but all the birds come through the veterinary clinic, which is super convenient, and it's open 24 hours, so people can drop birds off whenever they find them. Um, and we have people fill out a form, but we don't always get the entire story. Um, but HD was found um, on the ground near, near some trees. Uh, the people said that they looked around and didn't see, couldn't figure out where she could have come from. I mean, she couldn't have gotten far, so she must have just fallen out from wherever, you know, they must have been nesting in the tree that she was right underneath. Uh, but, but she needed to come in. Um, baby birds, you know, we usually, if it's a healthy baby bird uh, and it's got most of its feathers and it's hopping around on the ground, you'd want to leave it alone because it's a fledgling and they are supposed to be out hopping around before they can fly very well. Um, we get people all the every spring who pick up healthy fledglings and bring them in and we try to send them back because the parents are still taking care of them. However, if the bird is out of a nest and, you know, doesn't have feathers or, or doesn't have many feathers or is obviously injured, um, if it's injured, it needs to come and see, where are you going to go? Uh, it needs to come and see somebody. So this bird was obviously injured. I mean, she was very, very small. She didn't really have feathers yet. She had fuzz, fluffy down feathers, and she couldn't, she couldn't stand um, when she first came in because she had that broken leg. So... 
Uh, so they brought her in and she was just this little tiny, adorable, you know, gray fluff um, that couldn't stand up and, you know, held her eyes, squeezed her eyes shut like she was in pain. So she was on um, antibiotics and uh, pain medication um, for a while when she was a baby and we had to, you know, convince her to eat, cut her food up in little tiny pieces um, and convince her to eat. So that's her story. And I mean, we're, we're lucky that she, um, you know, it she kind of took, she took consider considerable effort, <laughs> uh, but it's totally worth it because she's such an amazing little owl. Um, and we're really lucky that we are able to keep her. That's great. So you brought up, a, you just brought up a point about how you had to cut up her food and you've been feeding her little worms right now, but it looks like yeah. someone says, well, what do you feed her since she, since she can't hunt? Well, we feed her these little mealworms, um, and we also feed her, there's also some mice in here, pieces of mice. <laughs> so she gets, oh, where are you going, little buddy? Oh, HD, what are you doing? HD thought, I will land on that chair. Um, so she eats uh, about, again, about one mouse a day, um, or something the size of a mouse. Um, a mouse or a baby rat and we get them dead. They're frozen and dead. Uh, she also eats, she eats worms also. So there's two days a week where she gets um, some worms too. They would eat a lot, a lot of insects in the wild. And then one day a week she gets um, a dead uh, chick, um, a dead chicken chick or a dead quail chick. And those are a little bit big. So she usually eats about half of it and saves the rest for later in the corner. Um, but, just, but so she, she eats everything. Um, the mealworms are, are alive, but the rest of the stuff she eats is dead. Great. We have two more questions. Remember, this is your last chance to ask some um, questions here, folks, in the Q&A. But uh, HD is getting a little rowdy, so we won't have time to read her second book. But thanks for asking. You could probably find that on her website. At Kate, is it katiefallon.com? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. So um, you can find it there. She's also our keynote speaker for next year. She's going to come and talk to us about turkey vultures and maybe she'll do another youth program. Um, so stay tuned for that for next year. Uh, just a couple more questions here. Um, where, uh, when and why do they hoot? And then just after you follow that up, I'm just going to ask you, we have some folks from Florida here that are very interested if you could find a screech owl there. Yes, you can find screech owls in Florida. Screech owls are really all over the place. I mean, they're very widespread. Um, and then about the, the hooting. Um, so, so why, when and why do they hoot? Um, they, uh, they would hoot to set up a territory and they, what's interesting down there? She's gonna land on my perch, my purse. Where are you going? Um, so they, there you go. You want to come sit down here? Okay, you can sit right there. Uh, there, there you go. There you are. This is when she was going to want to go on. She, I started the bad habit of her sitting on my shoulder and my head when she was a baby, but we're gonna we're trying to break her of that because that's not professional, right? Um, anyway, they would hoot to set up territories, and they would also um, hoot to stay in touch with each other. Um, after the babies leave the nest, you know, they want to stay in touch with their parents. Um, so they might hoot then also. But setting up territory um, is, is when I have most often heard them. And that is in, uh, it's usually in the late, late winter or very early spring. Um, and actually what I can pull up here now that I'm, I'm sitting here and I've got, uh, this will only take me a second, but I, I bet I can see now that I said screech owls live in Florida, I want to make sure that I'm right. Yes, screech owls live year round in Florida. Um, so that's the Eastern screech owl, Eastern screech owl map. And your Western screech owls, um, we kind of pick up pretty much where the uh, Eastern screech owl leaves off. And we also could have whiskered screech owls, um, but they are further, they're kind of down in Mexico. Awesome. And what bird app were you using there that people could use to look up birds? Oh, that is iBird Pro. All right. Oh, that's my favorite one. All right. 